We're going to take a look here at this deep forehand corner. So I'm just going to let the video run in slow-mo for starters. And let's see if you guys can pick up anything and spot anything going on. So this is roughly the same time we're hitting the ball. So I'll go back another couple of times and I always try and tag it when I'm making contact on the right and the student's making contact on the left. I might just be a little bit out there. So let me just readdress that. So it might be there. Yeah, about there. Okay, so let me go back and let's see if you guys can spot the difference in slow-mo to start. I'll run it a few times and see what you, you can think of both of these swings. So there's, there's definitely some good similarities, but we'll just break it down bit by bit. Let's go again. Okay, let me take an example of, of what I'm looking for on the right. Um, obviously, I'm demoing this, so I hope it's, it's, it's pretty decent and pretty okay. So first thing I always talk about is, is the placement of those feet. I really do like this 45 degree angle. I'm going to zoom in on, on both of us here. So you can probably start to see some of the differences straight away. So you'll notice those feet are 45 degrees roughly into that back corner. Big fan of going left foot, right foot. If you just flick to the student there on the left, let's just look at his feet for a sec which way he goes in he goes right then left so again common amateur fault if you could get the left right combination so you see my left foot goes first and then my right foot goes after so that sets me up really nicely to be able to then transfer my weight so i'm not quite side onto the ball yet so i'm going to skip forward on, on my video but look there now so when i make contact look how i'm pivoting around reaching that ball side on but I've got momentum. I'm in this position that I'm ready to strike and then I'm going to go side on. I hear so many coaches talk about get side onto the ball and I agree in fundamentals, but you've got to be able to have some sort of buffer zone to be able to then move into getting side on. If you start side on, do you know what you have to do? You have to lock side on and then everything becomes a little bit stuck and a little bit stiff. Whereas I'm able to then pivot and get side on. So, and then I'll just talk about the rest part of my movement here. So then my left foot's coming out. You'll notice this left foot comes out quite quickly with my swing. Look at that attachment. By the time I hit that ball, that left foot's coming out, right foot stays on the ground. I push out nicely and I haven't quite fully rotated yet. You notice that I'm still facing a little bit side on. I'm trying to leave things side on. I just need to zoom out a sec. And then you'll see this right foot will come behind, which I call the cross under to then flick me back to the T pretty efficiently. Okay, so those are some of the key bits. There's another few bits I haven't quite mentioned yet, but let's just look at some of the comparisons. So if we've got my student on the right, I'm going to talk about something that I, I didn't talk about in mine first, but let's use that as our starting point. Let's look at that racket position. You can't quite see the bend, but there's a nice bend in that elbow. But this is the position that I would like players to get into. If you notice the student there, slight bend in the elbow, but then the problem is that racket head is a little bit low, a little bit flat. And then look at, if you just watch his arm there for a sec, look at how, look at how many moving parts there are. That's going to cause a lot of inconsistencies. And you'll probably see when he starts to hit the ball now, if you're just watching what's going on here, as he's starting to hit the ball, he's a little bit off balance. He's falling away a little bit. And then it ju it's just going to affect the shot. That shot's going to be pulled out and very difficult to control. And because of that, you'll notice his follow through. Look at how it comes across his body. Whereas if you'd notice mine, what I'm trying to do is pushing it through the line of the ball. So if I can push it through the line of the ball for as long as possible and straighten it, should hopefully straighten that ball up. You'll also, also notice in my picture compared, there's a lot of balance and I'm transferring my weight back through the shot, back through towards the tee. If you look at the student on the left, there's a little bit of a fall away. The balance isn't quite there. So for me, the big couple of things is, firstly, let's look at his foot placement. Not quite the right angles to start. So he's a little bit side on. He's having to compensate with that, with that right leg a little bit, getting it into that position there. And then, you know, because he, it, just, it just looks a little bit difficult, looks a little bit awkward to be able to do. And because this is not set up quite right yet with his racket, you'll see quite a, quite a wobble going on through there, which is, is definitely something to try and limit. And if he can get that limited, he's going to be able to play that ball a lot straighter. So again, using, using the kind of frame of reference on the right there, if we could work with him and think about this for your game, getting into that 45 degree angle, really settling in. You'll see then I use, I, I hate saying this, but look at my butt for a second. Look at how I'm using and sitting my butt down, getting it down. And then I use that to slightly fall away. So if I can get there, I sit down, I have that little pivot so I get side on. And then everything transfers nicely with a good bit of timing through the shot. Uh, one other thing to notice again, 
just notice where I take the ball in regard to my student there. So if I just go back a couple of frames, look at how low my ball is there. It's really low, isn't it? I'm letting that ball come right off that glass, really dropping it low. That helps me bend my knees a little bit. So yeah, hopefully a few of these tips are starting to resonate and think about what's happening when you're able to take that ball from the deep forehand. Okay, it's an easier shot. You know, it's not the hardest shot in the world, this, but I think it's very important to set up with those basics really early on. So I'll just zoom out and see how we're looking with this. The way we follow it in as well is quite interesting. So my student's got his racket up quite nice, maybe not as high as mine. You can see that that racket's up relatively high, relatively ready, not too high. Nice threatening position. I, I really like to talk about this threatening position in there. You just notice that doesn't look that threatening in that position. And from there, I'm able to transfer all that weight across relatively easily and move out. And then again, the student on the left frame just is all a little bit wobbly, all a little bit reactive. And he actually plays a really good shot, to be fair. Like, look at the quality of that shot he plays. It's, it's phenomenal, considering that, that it's a little bit messy and a little bit untidy. And again, just reinforcing uh, my student on the left. Just look at that foot, foot placement. Look how he goes the right foot first, then the left foot. And that actually gets everything stuck. It, it, it's, quite a, it's quite an interesting movement that and actually definitely does stop things quite significantly at that point. So hopefully that's, again, like it's making sense thinking about what's happening with your game. Have a look at some of the pros. Not every single pro would do it this way, but I think it's a big common theme. As always, if you like this video, please do subscribe and click the notification button on, on the website on the Squash Mind YouTube channel. Uh, this channel's growing and every single week there's going to be three, four or five videos on all these coaching tips. Please do support it. Please do share. Please do comment on anything that you see. I'm really excited, really looking forward to opening up this channel and, and making it into something quite big. If you want some private lessons and some private online stuff, uh, visit the squashmind.co.uk website. There's a lot of information there how to book some online lessons with myself. I'm doing a lot of this online coaching now. It's becoming really successful, really popular, and it's definitely the way to start to learn the game more. When you get on the court, it's great. You can practice, but actually the online stuff is for learning. So thanks for the support as always, and keep watching out. Keep coming back for all these videos coming up over the next few months.